Well, it's another crappy rainy day here in Monta. We got rain, torrential rain coming down this morning for at least two hours. You probably saw some of the little shorts that I did. I got flooding all over this apartment and coming in my bedroom, coming in my kitchen, coming down above the sink. It's leaking everywhere except in the shower. Imagine that. How come, how come we don't have any roof leaks in the shower? So, so I thought, you know, I think I'll just do a video and talk about something that somebody shared with me and I'm going to share with you right after this. Hey! Hello there. A friend of mine Jeff, he's, he, 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 he may not know it, but he, he's, he has become uh, a very good friend of mine, and he, uh, he shares some really good wisdom with me from time to time. He's one of these guys that just, you know, knows a lot about a lot, and he sent me something, and I'm going to read it to you, okay? And I want you to, to think about this, because this is for those of you that you know have questions in your mind about whether you want to move to ecuador or not okay and we all you know we all have doubts okay so i'm going to read what what jeff wrote to me and then wish wish you a nice day and move on okay he says i am an american and when i tell other americans i plan to move to ecuador in the next three years they are aghast to hear the news they are incredulous that I would so much as entertain such a notion with what, what with all the problems of such a backward country. Okay? Now pay attention now, folks. This is good. Specifically, the people of Flint, Michigan, cautioned me about the poor water quality in Ecuador. The residents of Seattle urged me to consider the frequent cloudy and rainy days there. My friends in San Diego ask how I could bear such a monotonous climate. Alaskans tell me that nights in the Andes can be quite chilly. Floridians enlighten me that Ecuador's coast could be very hot and humid. The people of Louisiana warn me about the insects. New Yorkers say that South American cities are too densely populated. <laughs> Also, I'd like to add to that. New Yorkers also say that it's noisy there. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. But, but anyway, the people of Detroit and Memphis admonish me about the violent crime I will encounter. Residents of Newark warn me about the drug trafficking gangs. Denver residents ask how I will cope with the thin air at such high elevations. Californians sound the alarm over the earthquakes along Pacific's, Ecuador's Pacific Rim. Hawaiians alert me to the prospect of volcanoes in Ecuador's highlands. Account holders with Equifax, Wells Fargo, and Silicon Valley Bank caution me about Ecuador's unstable banking system. The people of Los Angeles ask how I could bear to live in a place with so much air pollution. Residents of Mississippi warn me about the poverty in Ecuador. Puerto Ricans ask how I, expand, how I expect to manage in a Spanish-speaking country. Bostonians tell me Ecuador is too conservative, while Texans tell me it's much too liberal. Here's, I love this one. Unvaccinated Americans insist that I'm likely to catch COVID while living there. And finally, the whole of America wonders how I would even begin to afford health insurance and pharmaceuticals in a country like Ecuador. Now, on the chance the point I'm making here is too subtle, I will spell it out. Where we choose to live is a highly personal decision, and there are pros and cons to all parts of the world, even if not in equal measure. If we live long enough, we all will come to at least a few crossroads in our life. And as we contemplate which direction to take, and we try to determine whether we will be the better or worse for it, we must be ever mindful that to maintain the status quo carries a price as well. Yeah, it's good to be aware of what we may stand to lose 
by our decisions, but we should be just as aware of what we stand to gain by them too. To be sure, other countries have much to recommend them. Canada, Denmark, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and Spain are but five examples. Still, I could, not, I could do a lot worse than to live in Ecuador. It's a wonderful country and a wonderful people. So don't let the envious and resentful naysayers hold you back. It's your life. With the time you have left, make the most of it. Thanks, Jeff. I could not agree more. Could not agree more. So that's it. Thanks for watching this channel. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, bite me. Oh, and I say that with peace and love too, okay? Ciao, ciao. See you on the next one.